basically saving it from scrap right now. Um, somehow, I think we're just gonna try to get it running on the side of this hill. Yeah, she, it's just, I think it's just sitting in gear. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. She's getting late. So we don't wanna pay for a hotel like last time. So we got a tent. Oh my oh, god! Oh my god! Oh, that's so cool. Dude, <laughs> I think it was gonna go to scrap, dude. It's you! Blown up for our second old pickup in a month and a half. We don't need it. Here's the battery hold down. Make sure that gets loaded up. Bing bong. There we go. See, this is what I was talking about. You can get these extremely cheap at Menards. If you get a rebate, go pick one of these up. This is perfect for laying on the ground and rolling around sand and dirt and everything else if you're not a man like us. <laughs> well, hello there, guys. This is, this is our newest disaster we got here. It is a 1955 Chevrolet three-quarter ton, 3600, what they call it. And uh, we're, we're basically saving it from scrap right now. So about, I don't know, probably like two hours ago. This was posted on Facebook for sale. Again, don't look on there, it's terrible for you. Facebook for sale, and the caption basically read, we're moving to Arizona, and uh, we're taking this truck basically, or we're calling the scrap company in two days if it's not gone. Here we are, jumped into action, and it's because the last truck did so well for us. Not at all. We're buying another one. I don't know much about it, we just got here. It's on the side of a basically mountain in rural Iowa, in this nice river valley. It's a beautiful day in November. Yeah. We're just gonna, we're gonna go walk around real quick, show you guys what's going on here. This time, I don't think we have to do an engine swap, so that's nice. Start off, here we go. So, I already know what it is, and obviously you guys could probably guess too. It's another inline six. This is a 235, I think all stock. The beautiful thing about this is that it ran, I think 20 years ago. It does have a one wire alternator that was kind of installed. Looks like someone threw a coil on it. And then it looks like they just, these are all loose. So something was going on and uh, I'm sure that kept the water out. So obviously they did some maintenance on it and then just gave up. We don't know why it was parked. We just know uh, that they were getting rid of it. Didn't want to go to the scrap yard and said, we got tires that go with it. And uh, it did run a long time ago. It is uh, four speed on the floor, which is nice. I guess. And then, I don't know if we have any keys. We gotta go out. She's heavy on the rust side. Not as bad as the other truck. <laughs> Not as bad as the other truck. These doors probably actually function. I mean, oh yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. This one's way more solid. <laughs> so I'm a little, I'm a little scared because this is on the, literally, you yeah. can't tell on you, video. It's, yeah, it's extremely <laughs> sketchy. It's just, I think it's just sitting in gear. Maybe the emergency brakes on, I don't know, but. Well, we do have some flat tires, so it's been tire. here for a little so bit. So we'll air those up and make sure it goes through their house before they move to Arizona. She's a flat bed and it's a dump bed. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. So. The other, <laughs> the other one was a dump bed too. <laughs> about this. <laughs> it was a rusted out dump bed. This is an actual dump bed. It has a cylinder underneath and everything. So that's, that's pretty cool. Be worth at least a couple hundred bucks, I guess. And then, uh, I, you know, I think it'd be cool with this is if we found an actual bed for it and left it a dump bed and just kind of like cut it down. So maybe that's our goal. That would for, be pretty cool. That's our goal for this truck is we're gonna make a dump bed, I don't know, like a dump bed, uh, a sock bed dump and lower it to the ground. That's the goal for the truck. That's at least the, what's going on in my head. She's got a dumpy. <laughs> She called dumpy dirt. Um, somehow, I think we're just gonna try to get it running on the side of this hill. Gosh, it's gonna be so sketchy. We're gonna try to get to this level spot right here. That would be the goal. We do have plenty of rocks. This door doesn't shut. I got in earlier. We had, oh, shoot. 
Anyway, that was ripped. That's what it looks like inside. The glass is really nice in this truck. It's just a lot of air conditioning going on. You know, but there's not really that many holes in the floor, so it makes up for it. That's what you know. Let's see if she turns over. Everybody pray right now. This is actually, haven't tried it. Oh, no way. Oh. Oh, nice. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's in gear. And it wants to go backwards really bad. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna have to back her down the hill. I'm scared for my life. <laughs> First idea. We're gonna put this out of gear and see what happens. At least their house has. Yeah, their house is brick on the lower side. Yeah. Oh, look how cute that is. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's, she's pretty stuck, geez. Should we push her down a little bit? Okay, let's go a little bit further. Oh, baby time. Baby time. Putting in the work. Oh, that is pretty low. Yeah, that's good enough, yeah. No, I'm, honestly, I can't feel safe. So these are pretty easy to work on. Even easier than that slant six. I think as long as we got Oh, we didn't bring one of those. <laughs> what is your wax around this? Oh man, I don't know what's going on here. You're literally wax around. I've never seen that before. So, how's it looking there? Dark. Dude, why is it so gooey? I don't know, dude. I don't even know why yours. Maybe some of you old boys know and let me know. Does everyone know. put goo around their holes? Yeah, did everybody put wax in their holes? All right, so we made ourselves a little workbench. We're gonna bring up the tools from there. And just a little, it's probably the last time it was touched in the bed. Pretty sure those are some old bottles, right? I think 80s. I think 80s? We probably saw that for at least a dollar. All right, we're checking the oil. Basically, we need an ignition wire and we also need to find those keys, but we're just gonna check everything first. I mean, we're not in the center, but we're pretty good. <laughs> so she burns oil probably. We need to put some thick old oil on it. Luckily, we got Rotella. You know what we're just gonna do? We are going to grab the new power leads and put on new battery cables. After a little bit, we're about probably 10 miles away from the store. We'll probably run and go grab all that stuff and uh, then we'll try to jump the starter and get her to turn over which will be in our favor um after that i think we can rob they've got a suburban down there this is kind of chilling we're gonna ask them to see if we can grab an ignition wire off that and we're gonna put boop to boop and then we'll know if she has spark be moving right along there okay so we're changing these power leads right out right now something interesting i just found so we just had oh come on this little fella was on the starter and it came to that big lead so Obviously, when we get ready to see if the dump bed works later on, we're gonna have to figure something out here. Oh crap, this is. Oh my gosh. So yeah, these, these are pretty well toast. They've had their day. We'll hook this back up for you guys, maybe when we get home, and see if we can get this dump bed to turn into a dumpy boy. Dumpy boy. Well, again, the positive, and let's see if uh, we have any. Are they gonna go, wow, oh, oh. Okay, so we had no sparks at all, so we are not. We don't have anything voltage drawing right now when it's turned off, so that's somewhat good news. We're gonna jump the starter relay down there and uh, make it so that basically the truck turns over. So we're gonna make sure the starter functions in its right way. All right, we're hooked up. We're not tight, but we're hooked up. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my god, dude. You know, honestly, it sounds pretty good. Holy cow. That's got good compression, too. She's got a little bit of a... Dude, the clutch even worked. Yeah, sick. Starter Listen, worked, clutch I worked. I think we told everybody, but the clutch was, like, stuck when we got here. Yeah, the clutch was stuck. Give it a little kick. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked her downhill a little bit, and she worked a little bit. So it's getting windier and windier, so that's always beautiful. Nice cold day here. But 
we're getting ready to fight. It's kind of a large issue we're gonna have. That's the brake pedal. And then, oh my gosh, the age of this master cylinder is pretty, uh, you know, it's not young by any means, so we're gonna try to loosen this up, try to get this guy up at least, and then maybe get some freaking, oh my gosh, maybe get some uh, fluid in it and start working it. So, here we go, I guess. Let me go get a bar. <sighs> So it took everything to get this baby up and down. So it's gonna be pretty evident we don't have nothing. So what just happened is I got this to turn and it started turning over. And now uh, we're back to ground zero. Got the keys threw the new spark plugs in just because, and then obviously just end up getting the keys and we turned it over. We do not have voltage to the coil. We're gonna fiddle around with that wiring real quick. Other bad news is while I was waiting for Alex as well, the massive cylinder. Oh my goodness, dude. It's windy. Windy. Hurricane wow. Katrina. Like Hurricane Tortilla. While we were messing around, brake master cylinder is gonna be a massive issue. So we called around and did end up finding one and we have one on order. That being said, that puts us kind of behind schedule. I was really hoping to get this kind of moving today, get but lucky. we never get lucky, dude. Pulled that distributor cap off. I think we got some new points. Oh, come on, folks. And new condenser in there. All right, let it rip. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, no spark at all. Something smells hot. I don't think anything's on fire. So when we tur <laughs> turned it over, these points, they like turn red hot. I mean, this is probably something everybody else has seen, but this is not something I've seen before. And then we don't have voltage basically anywhere, but we must because those got glowing red hot. So I'm thinking these are just adjusted very poorly. I'm gonna put the new set we have on Okay, so here's the points out of it. There we go. Look how hot that got. So I think someone just had these adjusted extremely wrong, so they just sit against each other, and they wouldn't, you know, they weren't, they weren't adjusted. There's one reason why I think somebody tried to get this back up and running, and uh, they put the new points in it. Getting, it's working from the cab to the, or to the coil, or sorry, to the starter solenoid, but it's not working from the starter solenoid up to the coil. So I just gotta put an auxiliary wire from that up. No big deal. We're trying to get the main thing we need is spark. And uh, at this point right now, we're just getting a lot of uh, nothing. We have spark randomly, then we don't have it, and we have it again, and we have it, you know, just back and forth quite a bit. Put a brand new wire on the starter solenoid, and put a brand new wire also from the coil to the distributor because both those were shot. This is all leading me to believe that it was parked, um, well, it was parked from, I think, 1998, and then it got drugged somewhere else. Someone tried to get it running because they had a brand new point set in it, and then they set them messed up, and they are, they're melted. So now we're the, we're the last ones on the totem pole, and we're playing with uh, everybody else's disaster. Probably a good idea would be just put the brand new coil on it. We do have a brand new one, and I've just been kind of procrastinating putting that on just because I like to get it running with basically as much, you know, of the older stuff as possible, but obviously it's already been changed out, so it wouldn't matter at all. <laughs> Perfect. It wants it. We are going to now, if the points have spark, this guy was sparking, that means we're just, we're just ready to spark everywhere. So I'm gonna shoot a little bit of uh, fluid down this little fella. Let me grab it real quick. Yes, I did wash this out before. So you used to do something like that and then you can come over here and just fill this thing full 
right in the bowl. Get that float wall filled up. This is saying that it's gonna idle, which I highly doubt it. Oh my God, dude, I think it's super out of time. I'll tell you what I'm worried about. I'm worried about when, when they were messing with basically everything in here, they numbered the plugs and I kind of trusted them. We got plenty of blue spark. Okay. I think we've kind of figured out our issue. Yep. Oh, back firing at the carb, are we? Go ahead. Whoa. You know what? I think that is. Slightly a W. Gosh, I don't want to keep using starting fluid though. It's terrible on the first startup. Oh. Well, she's a she's a wobbler. Ah. Fucking battery, dude. Battery's gonna screw us. All right, guys, we went and got a brand new battery from the old AZ Delco. So this is, you know, it's going to be a good one when it's an AZ Delco. Um, Alex is down yonder with a, one of our new master cylinders trying to take off the old one without breaking the lines off because that's always the game you play. So we're going to wait till he's out from under the truck to try to get this thing to idle right. Um, had it pop off a couple times, but that old Crown Vicky battery wasn't having it. So. All right, so on our last video, everybody wanted to see us doing the brakes. So here we are, heating this girl up. We kind of fought this on the Dodge too. We got really lucky. The lines going to the distribution block stayed fine. I'm thinking this truck, the distribution block is basically what I'm heating up right now. It's not very complex, so. Now the reason why we're pulling this master cylinder is we can't get the top off because it's lead. And then when we heat it up, it starts blowing everywhere, melting. So we end up with a different master cylinder, which is probably the route we were gonna have to take anyway. We got the old one off. This goes basically into a frame mount, pretty simplistic. Understand there. That's underneath the floor, a little uh, rubber grommet. You pop out to add fluid. And then there's this little cute distribution block up in the front there that we're gonna have to get on here somehow. There's this massive, uh, like, it, well, it's a point where basically it's a pivot point for your brake pedal for that. And uh, then there's the actual push lever. We gotta pull this fuel tank out that he forgot to unwire. You, you didn't just cut the wires, did you? Uh, no, I took one out and then I yanked the other. Pull gas tanks, almost everything we do. Just due to the fact that, okay, we're gonna kill the grass. <laughs> They're moving, I guess, <laughs> goodness gracious. Um, so, it's full of varnish, is what you, we would call it. And um, we don't wanna have that getting fed up into the carburetor. So, we pull basically all of them just so we don't have to deal with that. Most of the time, if we have a tank in good condition, obviously we're gonna reuse it. But at least in this same circumstance, we know if it is a good tank and if it has a bunch of rest in it sloshed some new gas around it a couple different times and um, we're gonna find a, a barrel we can maybe pour this in. We'll get her cleaned out, put her back in, fill it up and then as long as we get a working mechanical fuel pump in this old girl, we'll be good to go. Didn't even crank on it twice and uh, battery's junk. We're gonna go and run and grab yet another battery which uh, the parts store is about 30 minutes away so this is uh, going phenomenally but you can't expect much from uh, parts nowadays. Down in the comments, why don't you tell me if you guys have any luck with uh, new parts? Because I feel like we're just getting more and more junk.
every uh, every time. We always have trouble with batteries and alternators, but mostly batteries. <laughs> batteries just go down like mad. <laughs> so look at that sun right over there. She's getting late. We now have one battery here, one battery in there. We end up driving, what was it? Probably 40 miles, 50 miles round trip to a larger town because I showed up with my multimeter, checked the parts store's uh, batteries, we won't name them, and uh, everything was probably at 12.3, 12.2, 12.1. We need a fresh 12.6 if we're gonna get something running and driving. I mean, we tried this jump back, but our jump pack is completely garbage and I'm <laughs> We're already using electricity and they close in a couple days. So. Um, we also have. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> we were thinking, we're like, you know what would be a good idea if we brought a tent because we don't want to pay for a hotel like last time. So we got a tent <laughs> and we got sleeping bags. We're going to try to get this thing to idle. We're going to, if we can get this to idle today still or this, after, or this evening, um, I think we still have a really good chance. But if we can't get this thing to idle, we might have to think about some different ways of getting home. Just too easy. That's basically idle, dude. I'm telling you, uh, you didn't even plan it. So we tried to turn over a bunch of times. This is one take right now, this still. This is one take, for real. <laughs> <laughs> this is just nothing. This isn't even trying, honestly. So, and before, it was it was barely even turning it over. Yeah, it was at 11.8. Yeah. Oh, she wants to idle back. Oh, we're definitely gonna need to replace yeah, I'm, this. I'm gonna change you. <laughs> it's, water, it's... Dude, you know what though? If the water pump works, I'll take it. I think it was, <laughs> the air uh, fuel mixture screw was all messed up. There's a local, he's coming to help us. We're fighting the Soam. Soam beach tooth and nail right now. We've got really, really good, strong spark. Two plugs. We've got really strong part of spark at the contacts. We're just having trouble where we're shooting. We're giving her a little bit of gas and she's stumbling really hard. She's not wanting to pop off. When she does pop off, it sounds amazing, but starting to think that we these plugs might be of uh, the wrong gap. So I'm gonna go try to find the old plugs and compare them to one of the new plugs and see if they need to be smaller gapped or bigger gapped or what's going on because it don't make any sense what is happening. So we took this valve cover off because when we're starting it and you spray starting fluid in there, it stops the rotation basically. So we're gonna see if these valve boys are sticking. Yeah, so <laughs> I had to do a phone with a friend because you got two 20 year old boys here with uh, quite a bit of experience, but Still not as uh, much experience as some of the older generation, so phone to friend. I'm gonna make sure all these valves are opening. Gosh, I just, everything is, everything looks good, honestly. invented straight head screws I like to meet him in person and tell him how unhappy I am about his design oh. oh 
my gosh, I'd say that's a W. That's a W. I'd say that is, we're getting there. Come on, come on. All right. So, this so <laughs> right when we started just, <laughs> the best part of this is we know the water pump works. Yeah. So, um, probably a bright idea to probably change that out soon. Whoever messed with this poor truck had the tire or had the freaking timing messed up, which we fought forever. I just didn't think it's so hard to think that someone's going to mess with the timing on these old six hundreds just due to the fact like you're obviously not going to do any better than factory or why are you timing it or why what you don't know. But we could have had them or they could have put a new distributor in long story short and maybe they just didn't get around timing it. That's why all these old wires were all numbered. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they did have a new coil in, like an MSD. Like yeah, they had an MSD coil blaster too, which, you know, somebody tried. Someone tried to do something with it, but they obviously failed. And here we are. We're about to succeed where they failed. So, here we go. In a field. In a field. I'd call it At a night. <laughs> An Iowa mountain, bud. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, dude. Go ahead. She just wants bottle fat. Night 55 Chevy. I bet a deer's gonna take it for a drive. Well, I mean, it doesn't have any brakes, but it is a manual. Oh, yeah, bud. Don't look. Hey, my good. Oh, cold, dark, sleepless night with a couple trips to the truck to get warm. Thinking we were about 48 degrees. Um, sleeping bags are rated pretty good, but that still don't help your upper end. We need to bust some butt. I'm going to continue on uh, the master cylinder. Alex is going to take the carburetor off and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a little bit of rebuilding to it, which means we're just going to clean out with brake fluid and our brake, uh, brake cleaner and pray that that works. Here we are under the 55. This is the new master cylinder. What I thought was pretty interesting. Do you want a carb? Oh, yep. I'll put that down down here too. All right. Thank you. What I found interesting is this block here is made out of brass and it kind of seats against that steel. We're living on a prayer here because this line coming from the front is pretty well brittle. But the one from going to the back has been obviously messed with in the past. So I'm not too worried about that one. Probably going to have uh, Alex start pumping some brakes and seeing if he can get some bleeders open with the torch. Pulling this little fella apart. Something to be really careful of, especially if you don't have a kit to rebuild this, is make sure your T-pose. Make sure you be really careful with the gaskets that are kind of pre-existing because I'd really like to continue to use these for a little longer. So I'm going to start pulling this thing apart slowly but surely and clean out every orifice and like that idle adjustment or idle air adjusting screw. Um, I'm going to adjust that fella, take it completely out and be careful and then blow it out as well as I'm going to take the whole top so I can mess, see the float and everything. Anytime I feel like I'm working on this old 50s stuff, I feel like bolts, nuts, and everything just come like apart way easier. Like most of the time I feel like on these newer Hollies, let's say like a 60s vehicle, if it has like a Holly four barrel from the 90s or something, or even early 2000s, most of the bolts are always gonna strip out. and It's always really just hard to get out anything. I feel like on these older like 50s vehicles, if they haven't been tampered with very much, everything is like oily and lubricated and everything just comes out really nice. Like even the gaskets, like the gaskets on this little feller after I took the, the mount off, um, everything just stayed well. 40s, 50s vehicles always seem to come apart a little bit better. Okay, we got her open and you can, y'all can see down there why she was not wanting to do anything right. She is just full of crud. Also, I think this has been tampered with before. She's got a red spring in her. So, I'm thinking this thing has actually been rebuilt as well. Probably the same person that tried to uh, almost 
get it functionally running, but failed. I'm gonna finish just popping stuff out and clean it. I need to definitely clean out that jet. And I think she should be basically rebuilt as far as we can go. We got juices coming out of that bleeder. Kind of weird the coating on the actual bowl itself is coming out. Let's pray she stays together for us and doesn't suck anything up in that tiny little jet in that time frame while we're headed home. I think it's gonna actually function a lot better than it was last night. Getting her set back in place. Just gotta get this throttle set. Once it's tightened down, set the screw, put a new line on this guy, put a new line on here, and then put a new rubber line with a filter from the fuel pump to the hard line. And then throw the fuel tank back in and I think we'll be uh, be very close to actually getting the run. How are you looking? So far, that bleeder got open, pushed fluid out, and just did this bleeder and pushed fluid out and tightened them both down. Passenger side back one is broken off and can't even get vice grips on it. And then that side is, it's going to need vice grips because it's rounded over. So we'll see if we can get at least one back break. Exhaust pipe is secured. It's a midway dump, you know, just, it's basically a, Race truck. We are gonna have to run to the store one more time and uh, we can't get this fuel pump to pump anything. We primed it. Both ways, kind of let it sit overnight even. I think I put some fuel on it last night as well just to let the diaphragm soak in and didn't happen. So, and then we also have that going on. An animal must have really liked rubber because the top of this old hose was bit into as well as that was bit into and then the top of the fuel line over there was bit into. Other issue we're having is can't get this thing, I fill up the bowl and we can't get it to stay running with even the bowl full it might just be because i think those hold quite a bit of fuel so maybe it's just because we're not getting you know an adequate amount in there if we get a little clicker little the little junky fuel pumps from auto parts stores get it to start feeding it i'm sure we'll have better luck then but until then we're stuck just like last time look at that these animals. We got some stuff. These animals like to eat hoses. Oh my gosh, dude. Finally. The funny part of this is, is the mechanical one just started working. What? Yeah, I was just spraying everywhere. She sprays a little much for her. <laughs> All right, go ahead and start up one more time. Oh, she's leaking. Where at? Back. Yeah, I think she's, I think that pump might have a little bit too much. Ooh. Too much. Ooh. Donde está Santa Claus? You got the Gluck Gluck? I don't know, what do you mean? There's Joe's. That is, it's pumping now. Think she's charging? I wonder. Highly doubt it. 
Oh, oh ah. it's charging. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my. As you can see here, it runs. That's all I got to say. Let's see if it'll go forward or back. Twelve o'clock. On the dot. I promise we are actually smarter than it looks. Wow, this is something we need to show her. Filling up the tires right now, checking over everything, We've got packing up stuff. Tires that we uh, that were in the back. Let's see if we can figure out a date on here. In the comments, tell me how to figure this out. But I'm guessing. Gosh, where's it at? It's usually like. Isn't it usually that four nine o nine thing? Four six o nine. Well, let's say I think it's a, maybe it's a 2009 tire. It's uh, I was 10 years old. Don't look at the carburetor, please. That's what we gotta do. That's what we have to do for what we got. For some reason, there was like this adapter in there that was welded weird, and it didn't even connect to the actual. So it was a whole lot of failure. <laughs> Air cleaner, yeah. We we made the best of the failure. Just like the everything of this car too. <laughs> this is uh. Oh, there's a battery tire. Literally tied down. There we go. It's tied down. I think it's gonna be a slow trip, but it go happen. We're closing the hood. That's how serious we are. Oh. One of those things we'll worry about when we get home. We saved the old girl from sca uh, scrap, which I was going to in probably like three days. We also got it running for the first time since 1998. We have two brakes that work. We have a new master cylinder, some new ignition parts, and an electric fuel pump. All in all, if you guys want to do the same thing, the truck is very cheap. You can always find these deals on Facebook. Ignition parts, very cheap. And uh, basically, throw a battery in it, fuel pump, and uh, some brake cleaner. You guys can do this probably for right around 1500 bucks. I know a lot that doesn't sound as cheap as it used to, but just buy a couple parts, trust yourself, have a good time in the weekend, and uh, maybe sleep in a tent, save some cash, and have a good time. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Alex is gonna hook that up. I'm gonna try to get a head start, hook up the trailer and everything, and he'll be hauling behind me. We're gonna try to take some dirt roads and some country roads. Yes, sir. Third gear, 30 miles an hour. 
We're getting ready to come up to our first hill. There's always traffic everywhere we go, no matter what. <laughs> We're at mile press, I think. Alex texts me, 45. She's doing okay. We're coming up to another hill, so that's a little scary. All right, we're doing it. She's doing it. She has everything to say about it because it's louder than holy heck. I can't hear nothing. We're about averaging 45, 55 miles an hour. So not too terrible about an hour, about an hour in. The missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. I had a little bit of a scare. I don't know what happened. 
Got a big puff of smoke in here. It looked like she might have been uh, on fire. I didn't know if that electric fuel pump <laughs> gave out or what happened, but um, before I even got out, Alex jumped in, looked under the hood. She's good. I'm, I don't know. Maybe it just did a little puff, puff pass. I guess we'll see. Um, we're getting ready to take back off right now. I know Alex is trying to get a little bit of drone footage. We're not too far from home right now. Very close, actually. So I think this old girl might actually, uh, she might have actually made it home. And uh, yeah, I think she's doing really well. I'm very surprised, especially how hard this engine bought us to begin with. I think it was just tinkered with by the wrong person that really, uh, you know, I don't fault anybody for you know playing around with stuff, but it makes it a little tougher on the people that come after you. But we made it happen, and uh, we'll continue to make it happen. But I guess uh, we're gonna make sure she gets home. We are basically 10 miles from our destination. Definitely was running out of gas, but luckily we know this house quite well. And uh, we're gonna go grab a can from my dad. There he is. We're gonna show him. This is basically uh, he wanted a 1955 Chevy, so. We're gonna stop by and show them and uh, get some gas in her and uh, finish our journey. 20 some years sitting and she's finally seen the road again. And uh, I'm excited to get this dump bed working and maybe we can use this thing for some work. I'm gonna call this a success already. I know it was a success earlier when we got her running after 25 years, but I think it was definitely a success now. We'll see you guys at home. Okay, we're in city limits of the shop. Of course, there's a train on the tracks, so we're going to add about four miles to our uh, total trip. <sighs> Will she start back up? Than the utility bed. Yes. Alright guys, that is 150 miles down for the old 1955 Chevy 3600 Apache. We don't know. But um, if you guys uh, would rather have this truck more than we would like to have this truck, hit us up. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and go have a good time with your buddy getting something running that really shouldn't run or drive, and you'd probably go to jail for for driving on the road. See you guys next time. Not that that's going to have any con oh. Oh, connection at all. Stay. The moment of truth. Oh, oh my god! god. What the freaking shit? <laughs> no way! No way. No, way. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way! That's gotta be the best part, no. dude. Oh, that's sick. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> How? <laughs> Guard work gonna be easy this fall. Dude, this thing was gonna go to scrap, dude. <laughs> and the dump bed works. That is insane. This, uh, uh, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> So now we need to find an actual bed and we're gonna like we're gonna we, you'll see. we're gonna do some modifications we're gonna do some modifications it's gonna look the ground sick maybe put an exhaust on it for sure and uh we'll definitely put a bed on it and then the, the actual apache bed <laughs> like that bounce <laughs> This is sweet. I, I can't believe it. You know, maybe in the future, if you guys want to see us do some work with this, just to see if it's still a good yard truck slash scrap truck slash anything, put it down in the comments. What do you guys want to see us dump? You guys want to, you want to use this for construction for a day? 
Let's see if this is the new construction. 4,000 pounds of worth of... Yeah, let's see if it can uh, dump a whole load of sand, gravel. I don't know. Let's see what we can do.